Hi guys, well there seems to be a lot happening in the memory world these days. There's been some uh, reports coming out recently about some pretty exciting things coming. So let's take a look at it. Hey and welcome back to Back Beyond Tech. So as I said in the introduction, let's talk about memory not usually the most exciting thing but i think this time there's maybe some some exciting things coming down the line so first of all pcie 4 is being rumored or talked about they're setting the setting the compliance standards for it as we speak i think most interestingly about this is that they're talking about a minimum it will deliver 300 watts through the socket which could almost mean the end of an external connector for a graphics card um, don't know how they're going to do this. Uh, it might mean that you plug your 8-pin and 6-pin PCIe connectors into your board somewhere. But nevertheless, it's quite interesting. So it's 300 watts minimum, and they've even talked about 500 watts. But like I say, nothing is set in stone. As usual with PCIe, uh, every iteration of it, they tend to double the available, um, the, the, the available part of me, bandwidth for it. So PCIe 4 will be looking at 2 gigabits for one slot, so that would mean a fully activated 16 times slot could give you just under 32 gigabits per second of bandwidth. I don't know how useful that's going to be to the majority of us, as graphics cards aren't using all of the bandwidth on a 16 times slot PCIe 3 at the moment, so who knows, but it could be interesting, and um, let's see where it goes, but I'm looking forward to that 300 watts through the board, that could be good. Really clean builds coming up, but Drop a comment below, um, you know, tell me what you think. Do you think we need it? Do you think it's going to happen? Uh, what's it going to do to the price of motherboards? Are they going to go up because they're going to have to handle more wattage through the board itself? Um, like I say, guys, I don't know, but it's exciting times. Um, I think the article was talking about next year, 2017. I don't know how realistic that is, but you never know. But I'll link the article in the description down below. So moving on to another type of memory, but something that might be a bit more interesting to most of us. Again, it's linked to graphics cards mainly, but you never know. So the Hot Chips Conference has just finished in California, um, <clears throat> where companies like SK Hynix were talking about the next iteration of HBM. So they're looking at HBM3 already, where they could squeeze up to 64 gigabytes of memory onto one die. <clears throat> Pardon me, I've got a bit of a cough. I don't know what's going on. So. That's really exciting stuff, and again, that, that would up the potential theoretical bandwidth to 512 gigabits per second. But they're also talking about running these dies lower than 1.2 volts, would so give you some energy savings there and some thermal savings. Um, I don't know how realistic this is for most of us. Um, I think that's probably going to go into high-end computing. But what is interesting is they were talking about a cut-down version of HBM2 now, there's not too many details around this, but, you know, essentially they would be removing things like ECC correction and stuff like that. It would make it easier to manufacture and you're still going to get much more bandwidth than you're going <coughs> to, pardon me, than you get currently from GDDR5X. So I'm more excited about that going on to graphics cards in the next year or two. That would be much, much better than where we are with GDDR5X because it's maxing out at 12 gigabits per second uh, and the cut down version of HBM2 is, I can't remember, um, well put it this way, it's much higher than that. <laughs> I'll, I'll put an annotation in the video, I can't quite remember off the top of my head. Um, so yeah, exciting times. Um, I don't know what else to say but I'm definitely, I'm, I'm psyched for it. HBM3, you know, just to see where they're going to go with it, how far they can push it, but I'm more interested in more sites for a cut down version of HBM2. Um, in other news, they also talked about the next iteration of GDDR, GDDR memory, which would be GDDR6. Now, uh, this is not probably going to be around to around about 2018. Again, there aren't a lot of solid um, facts around this but you know I think what we're probably looking at is that it could go up to just trying to remember 14 yeah 14 gigabit per second 
which is, you know, it's an improvement, and that's per die, so that's, that's not bad either. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I think, I'm not sure where they would go though. I think if GDR6 is coming, it's gonna hit the shelves in 2018, and then you've got this cut down version of HBM2 coming at a similar time, and they're both easy to mass produce, and HBM2 cut down is cheaper, then I don't know, what would you go for? Would you go for a GDDR6? Or would you go for a cut down version of HBM2? I'm not sure. I've never had a card with HBM memory on it, so I, I can't talk to the performance firsthand. But like I say, it's interesting. It'd be interesting to see what's happening. You know, definitely it's heating up. All, all three companies um, are, are vying here for the latest technology, Nvidia, AMD, and Intel. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what they do with these new memory types as they're coming out, as they're trying to be top dog. And also trying to fill that, that, that part of the market that most people are interested in, you know, mass production, buying something that um, has better performance than the previous generation, but is, you know, is not top of the line. You know, it's not a, it's not a, a Titan XP, if you like. Sort of, um, um, sort of product. So that's it, guys. So just a bit of news um, that I was reading about earlier on. Like I say, I will link all the articles I read in the video description below. But most importantly for today, I am going to be announcing just now uh, the winners of the games I'm giving away. So I'll be contacting the winners through YouTube, and <clears throat> it'd be great if they could just drop a comment just so people know that I am actually. Uh, contacting them so you know I'm not scamming people so down to it so Duke Nukem Forever is going to Mr. Kaziard Carziard I don't know but anyway I'll be in touch with you mate uh, and as soon as you get back to me I'll send on the steam key to you no problem if you've got any problems get back to me but it should activate absolutely fine and the copy of Mafia 2 is going to Luke Ellis so again I'll be in contact with you mate um, through YouTube um, or if you've got a Google Plus account linked through YouTube account I'll get you on that and I'll send on the key to you so yeah enjoy guys if you've got any problems get back to me all right but definitely comment so people know I'm not scamming you out there so guys that's it I'm gonna get on out here it's the weekend I've got stuff to do so like this video if you liked it dislike it if you disliked it if you disliked it leave a comment but don't forget to mash that subscribe button for more great tech videos. Bye.